Hello again. So we've been talking about trigonometric functions in relation to the unit circle. And on that unit circle we've talked about very, 16 very specific angles that are um, multiples of 30 degrees and 45 degrees or multiples of pi over 6 and pi over 4 radians. But what, what you need to know is, and what I think you should already know, is that there are a heck of a lot more angles than just those 16 angles, even in one revolution. So we need to talk about how we're going to find the trigonometric functions for an angle that's not one of those standard 16. So let's take a look at a situation where we have an angle that's not one of those 16. Let's say I have a point somewhere over here in quadrant 4, right there. Okay, and let's say um, it's the point 3, negative 4. 3, negative 4. I can make a right triangle. Well, let me erase that. The terminal angle or the terminal side we're talking about here is going to look like this. So this is this is the angle we're talking about. So we're talking about this angle right here. So my question then is what are the trig functions of that angle theta? This is not a standard unit circle angle. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to draw a right triangle because they are really easy to work with. We have some very simple rules that we can use. So I'm going to draw a right triangle in red here. And I'm going to label this angle inside as, uh, let me erase that little mark there. I'm going to label this angle inside as, we'll call it theta prime because it's not actually theta, but it's related to theta. Okay? That's theta prime. Now, if we say that the sides of this triangle are 3 and negative 4, this is clearly not drawn to scale. Okay? My x value is 3, my y value is negative 4. So we went 3 this way and 4 down. Okay? We can also figure out what the hypotenuse is because we know the Pythagorean theorem. Let me go ahead and put our right angle in so we're clear where that is. There we go. We can also indicate our hypotenuse is 5 if you do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? I can find the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent of this particular angle right here by using our relationships in this right triangle. For example, sine opposite over hypotenuse would be negative 4 over 5. Cosine would be 3 over 5. Tangent opposite over adjacent would be negative 4 thirds, and so on. So we could actually find all of our trigonometric functions of this particular angle in blue. How is that related to the angle that we're actually looking for, which is theta? Well, that's the reference angle. And we already talked about reference angles and the relationship between uh, an angle and its reference angle. In other words, the angle, the shortest distance from the terminal side to the x-axis, which is there. And if you need a refresher on reference angles, you can go back and look at that video. Okay? So, if we're not talking about the unit circle, we can come up with another set of relationships. Let's call this x, let's call this y, and let's call this r. It's not actually the radius of a circle, but we'll call it r anyway. So the sine of an angle is going to be y over r. My cosine of the angle is going to be x over r opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. The tangent of my angle will be y over x. And I don't need to write them out, but 
the um, reciprocals, cosecant r over y, secant r over x, and cotan x over y. The only difference between this situation and our unit circle is that in our unit circle, r is 1. So our sine was actually the y value, y over 1. The cosine was the x value, x over 1. But in this case, our radius or our distance to that point is not 1 anymore. It's a number that's not 1. Okay? I think this will probably be clearer to you if we do an actual example. So let's do a, an actual example of this. I'm going to clear all that out of there. And here's the example. We're going to do two examples, actually. The first one, if the sine of my angle is negative 5 thirteenths and I'm in quadrant 3, what are the other five trigonometric functions? What are the values of the other five trigonometric functions for that angle? Okay? In these problems, you will always be given two conditions. And the first thing you should always decide for yourself, unless it's actually explicitly stated like it is in this one, is what quadrant are you in. In this case, it tells you you're in quadrant 3. So let's go ahead and draw this. This says that our sine is negative 5 over 13. So we know we're in quadrant 3. Let's go ahead and draw our right triangle. It won't be to scale. I'll try to do as best we can here. There we go. So there's a triangle in quadrant 3, and our reference angle is right here. Oops. Did it again. All right, let me go back to my other tool here. There we go. So there's the angle I'm talking about in the triangle. Now that's not the actual angle we're talking about, is it? The actual angle we're talking about is this one, aren't we? But again, since the angle in blue is the reference angle for this larger angle, we can rely on the coordinates or the trig functions to be um, analogous. Okay? So now let's put in our numbers. What do we know? We know the sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay? The opposite side, which would be over here, wouldn't it? Is negative 5. And it's negative 5 because we're in, we're in the third quadrant and we know that y's are negative. And my hypotenuse is 13. It might help to know that the hypotenuse is always positive always. Okay? You can then do the Pythagorean theorem. Let's do that because we have a missing side here that we're going to need for our other trig functions. So I have x squared plus negative 5 squared equals 13 squared. x squared plus 25, negative 5 times negative 5, equals 169 x squared equals subtract 25, and we get that x is plus or minus 12, right? Because if I take the square root, it's either the plus or minus root. Well, the question is, what is it? Is it plus 12 or minus 12? And the fact that we're in the third quadrant gives us our answer. We're going that way, aren't we? So x has to be negative 12. If we were actually going to write the coordinates for this point, that point would be negative 12, negative 5. Once I have that information, I can write the rest of my trig functions. Like I said, sine is negative 5 over 13. Cosecant should be the next obvious one, which is the reciprocal, negative 13 fifths. But let's write the others. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side to my blue angle here is negative 12 over the hypotenuse, which is 13. So my secant, which is going to be the reciprocal of that, would be negative 13 twelfths. And then I only have two more. Tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent. My opposite side is negative 5. My adjacent side is negative 12. Negative over negative makes the positive, 5 twelfths. And my cotan is 12 fifths. 
That's how I find the trig functions of any angle, even if it's not on the unit circle. I draw a triangle in the appropriate quadrant, make sure the signs of my x and y are the same, and that will give me my answer, and then use opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent for sine, cosine, and tangent, and the reciprocals. Let's do one more just for good measure. How about if I told you the cosecant of the angle is 4 and the condition is that the tangent has to be less than 0. So the tangent is negative. That's what that means. Okay? So right away, you can see your cosecant is 4, which tells you what? It also tells you that your sine is the reciprocal of that, which would be 1 fourth. So you have to ask yourself, what quadrant am I in? I have two conditions here, don't I? I know that my sine is a positive, but my tan is negative. Where is my sine positive? My sine po is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Tan, do it in a different color, tan is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So what is the only quadrant that we could possibly be in that for both of those conditions to be true? And your answer is quadrant 2. You have to know your signs for your trig functions. Okay? So let's go ahead and draw our triangle. We are in quadrant 2. Again, this probably won't be to scale. And it's not the best right triangle, but you get the idea. Okay? So, what have we got? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, isn't it? So, opposite side, here's my angle, is 1. My hypotenuse is 4. Is that a positive one? Sure, because in quadrant 2, x is negative, y is positive. Okay, we're talking about that point right there. Okay, so we want to find this missing side. There's always going to be a side that's missing, so let's use the Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared plus x squared equals 4 squared. That's 1 plus x squared equals 16. x squared equals 15. So x is going to be either plus or minus the square root of 15. So the question is, is it the positive root of 15 or the negative square root of 15? Well, if you take a look at it, if you take a look at it, my x is going to be negative, isn't it? My y is positive, my x is negative. So my x is going to be negative radical 15. Now I've got all the information I need. Here's the first two. Now let's talk about the cosine. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Your adjacent side to that angle is negative radical 15 over 4. My secant, which would be the reciprocal of that, would be negative 4 over radical 15. That needs to be rationalized, and I'll leave that to you. Negative 4 radical 15 over 15. My tan is going to be opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. My opposite side is 1, and my adjacent side is negative radical 15. Again, you're going to want to rationalize that, so that's negative radical 15 over 15. And then my last step is to determine the cotan, which is adjacent over opposite. That's negative radical 15 over 1, or just plain old negative radical 15. So I have found the six trig functions for that particular angle. It's the angle whose line goes through the point negative radical 15, 1. That's how we find trig functions of any angle. Thanks. See ya.